Hi guys, so welcome back to a another video on Let's Make a Webtoon. I almost said Webtoon Artist Rambles, but I did it. So for our last video, we learned, I'm loud, I'm loud. For our last video, <laughs> we learned how to make a webtoon for those who are traditional artists, how to import like your sketchbook pages, your pictures, how to import images into Clip Studio Paint. We learned that. For those people who want to draw their webtoon that they made on paper and they want to draw it digitally, we learned how to import images into Clip Studio Paint so that their webtoon that they made on paper can now a digital webtoon. That's what we learned yesterday. <laughs> so our action step was learning how to import images and also how to add layers. Today's video, we're moving on to the art portion. And by the art portion, I mean we are going to learn what brushes I like to use to sketching. We're going to learn how to sketch, how to draw in Clip Studio Paint. Not how to draw, draw, but what brush I use for my sketching process. That's the only thing we're learning today. And then your action step is going to be you also will need to find a brush or pencil or whatnot that you want to use for the sketch process. Now, some of you might be like, hey, what if I don't want to sketch anything? You don't have to if you don't want to. If you want to just jump right into the inking, go ahead and do that. There are artists that like to do that. You do what makes you happy and what works best for you. For me, sometimes I might just jump right into the inking. Other times I'm like, eh, I want to sketch it out first. So that's the process that we're going to be doing today in my thing that I'm doing on YouTube. <laughs> so again, if you don't want to sketch your stuff out and you want to jump right into inking, we will cover our, what brush I use for inking in the next video. For this video, we're going to be, we're going to pick our sketching brushes. Again, if you don't want to sketch anything, just ignore this video and just come back for the next video. <laughs> okay, let's jump into it. As I mentioned, this is my Wacom display tablet. This is what I draw on when I am drawing digitally. You do not need this to draw digitally. I have an art hoarding addiction, so I like to draw, I, I, I like our supplies. I like our supplies. I have the Wacom one over here. I have my laptop over here. And then like, I have, and then right here, I have my iPad. And then in that corner, I have a graphic tablet. <laughs> Ignore the messy office. But this is what I use to draw on my computer. My computer's over there. I need to, I need to, it has stuff on there. Not bad stuff. <laughs> Anyways, this is what I use. I connect my display tablet to my computer or else it won't work. It, Cause it doesn't have its own built-in operational system like my iPad does. But that's, let me, let, I'm going to, I'm getting distracted. Here's the brush that I like to use when I am sketching my stuff. I literally will use the default one. This here, I hover over it. Can you can you see it? Can you see it? There we go. That's not the one. Right here. That's what I use for my sketching. And I just use that one. It's it's the default that comes with Clip Studio. Oh, I'm using Clip Studio Paint X if you're wondering. And this is my webtoon, Catch Me, Fight Me, Love Me. But yeah, that's, and I literally keep this, everything the same. That, that's, that's all that I do. I just click this and I like to use a mechanical pencil. Now remember what we learned in our la in last time's video. I don't know when I posted it. <laughs> but remember what we learned, how to add our sketches. You know, we import our images. Someone had asked, hey, how do we move, how do we change the size of our images? I'm gonna go ahead and select this tool right there, operations. This is my skin and image that I uploaded. And you'll see like these dots you'll see these dots this is how I can shrink it and expand it like that without it like looking too wonky put that back over there so for people who scan who imported their scanned in pictures so that they can draw over top of it that's how I move my images around now we're gonna go ahead and make our new layer like we learned last time Boop. Now, we're going to pick our pencil, boop, and now we can just start drawing over top of it and start cleaning up all the lines and just finalizing whatever we want to finalize. The reason why I like to draw on layers, see, watch, watch, you see, it goes away. Here's the eyeball. 
You take the eyeball away, it's gone. Let me just, there it is, now it's gone. There it is, now it's gone. It's separate from my sketch. So I don't have to worry about, you know, drawing over it. There we go. So that's what your action step is gonna be. I want you to find whatever sketch pen you wanna use. If you are sketching from a sketch that you've imported that you learned in the last video, here, let me just show you how you import images. You go to File, oh my God. You go to File, Import, Image. And then whatever image that you have scanned into your computer or, or your iPad or phone or whatnot, upload it there. You can move it around with this tool right here that I showed you. Let me. You can resize it with this tool if you want, the object. You can resize it if you want like that. Some people like to use a transformation tool. Other people have had issues with that. So you can use that to easily resize it. Make your new layer. You can go right here. Or you can make a new layer right here. And then now you start cleaning up your sketches. So that's your action step. <laughs> Pick a pencil, pick, pick a pencil, pick a pencil and then make a new layer and start scribbling over it and get comfortable with that. Now you might be wondering, hey, what about the vector layer? What are those other layer things? We're going to cover vector layers when we start our inking process. We won't go into vector layers because today we're learning how to sketch. We're learning the sketching. We're learning what tools I use for sketching. And for those who don't want to sketch then and you just want to go into the inking part, we'll learn that later. But yes did that make sense i also got asked another really good question and that was how to turn the script into a no was it the question was they were they had a script where people were talking a lot and they didn't want it to be repetitive because they're like i, I don't want to just draw like the heads talking or whatnot so i'll let me read the comment to you and then we will answer it together using my book as an example. Let me just do that because I'm I'm confusing myself trying to think. I can th I can think. I'm confusing myself trying to remember because I can't I can't remember. The question was: I have this scene where the protagonist is talking um, with a govern across the table, and they're talking back and forth for a long time. So my panels, oops. So my panels just ended up being their faces one after the other back and forth how do I fix my panels to make it not boring I just want to preference this I don't think it's boring to have characters talking back and forth that might be biased of me to say because my comic has my characters talking back and forth so I don't think it's boring I think your comic is very very good because I think my comic is very very good or trying to tell myself that because a lot of my comic is just them talking back and forth there's no action it's just that but what i like to do is i like to utilize the who what when where why and how when i am drawing talking scenes so if you are like i don't want them just talking back and forth just the head showing you can you do what i do so for this answer and answer oh my god for this panel i have the who and then for this panel, I have the what. They're still talking back and forth, but I have the what, so I use their body language. So who's talking? Oriana J. Juan. And I want to do, they're still talking, so it's like, okay, well, we will show what they are doing. So Oriana is screaming. <laughs> so I show the what. And then for another one, I can do the where. So I'll show you that panel. So I'll use backgrounds to show the where. If they're still talking, then I'll have like their talking one right here in the background to show where and then the how how they are feeling right here i'll zoom in on their faces my the color is you can see her face just my camera's not picking up the color correctly but like the how they're feeling they're still talking but i'll just like show a panel like how they're feeling in the expression and then i can't remember what else i said but yeah the who what when where why and how i try to answer those in panels and that helps me to like if i want to just not have the panels just be just their heads talking back and forth i'll just have the different panels i'll show a background i'll show 
their full bodies, I'll show a close-up of their hands, I'll show a chibi version, I'll show their expressions, stuff like that. That's what I like to do when I am drawing my panels. Well, that's what I like to do when I'm like turning my script into a sketch face and yeah, hope, did that make sense? I hope that made sense. That's it for today's video. <laughs> make sure to subscribe so that you can catch the next video in our series, How to Make a Webtoon Using Clip Studio Paint. For those who are like, I want to learn how to make it with Metabonk, I will do a series on that after we're done with this series. And for those who are like, I want to know all of your tips on how to start a webtoon, I have an ebook in my description box. And you can check out my website where it's all like free to read or just check out like the other playlist on here. I talk about it a whole lot. It's my current hyperfixation. But okay, I gotta go because I'm tired. I love you guys. Bye.